Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. Manny Machado agreed to a 10-year, $300 million deal with the San Diego Padres today. I'm not sure which is more surprising, the $300 million or the San Diego Padres. There are only two or three people happier today than Machado. That would be Mike Trout, who will be a free agent after two more seasons, Bryce Harper, who will get a deal in the next week or so that will probably surpass Machado's contract, and, of course, Francisco Lindor of the Indians, who, along with Trout, are the top two players in the game of baseball. Unless Lindor's calf injury scares him into signing an extension now rather than gambling on his health in the future, the best shortstop in the game has three more years with the Indians at at least $10 million a year. Then he'll break the bank the moment he can leave Cleveland. Somehow, San Diego, with no other sports franchises and similar in market size to Cleveland, can get it done. But Cleveland obviously can't. And the window for Cleveland's success is closing, and it'll officially be closed when somebody other than Lindor is introduced on a future opening day as the starting shortstop for the Cleveland Indians. More sports and Les Levine starts right now. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Tuesday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 23rd consecutive year and, of course, seen exclusively right here on Cleveland.com. Seen exclusively tonight, Bud Shaw, WKYC.com. Hello, Bud. Great to be with you, Les. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Great well, to that's, be. Least my, that's my story right now, and I'm going to stick to it for the <laughs> next hour. So. All right. Uh, you surprised by the Manny Machado situation and, and the order in which this is coming, Machado, then probably Harper? I'm more surprised by San Diego being the club. Yeah. Um, I know that they've, you know, they have a couple of committed owners out there who finally want to Who should bring, be committed. Who should be based on that contract. Hey, listen, this is a guy, and I don't doubt his talent at all, but this is a guy who told Fox last year during the playoffs that hustle isn't really his thing, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it were his thing, they'd have they'd pay him forty million a year. Yeah, I would knock off all right, ten million for that comment, another ten for the next. <laughs> I mean, I, they, these kinds of deals, and I, I, I realize that he's only uh, um, twenty six, twenty six years old. That there is an opt out uh, after five years, um, both I, ways. I think I don't. I didn't look at it that yeah. closely. Um, I think it protects him if the market continues to go up even crazier. Right. But these things never, almost never, work out. No, I, I, the, the closest one might have been A-Rod uh, to Texas. But, yeah. But you're talking, that was 10 years. That you, was you 10 can't years. Predict. Um, yeah, I mean, you can't predict. Pujols certainly didn't. No, and, that, um, and that's mo mostly injury-wise. And, and Trout will be next one up probably in, in two years. And then, uh, then Lindor. And right now, if I'm Lindor, I'm, I'm laughing almost all the way to the bank. Yeah, I mean, this also follows on the uh, heels of, uh, of paying Eric Hosmer $144 million last right. year. So. Um, they're clearly going for it all, and um, in that division, it's tough in know, that division. It's going to be tough. It's still tough to outspend the Dodgers, no matter yeah. what you're doing. Um, Dodgers, I think, gave up five minor leaguers for Machado. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, I just, I just don't know if I know people want to see the Indians keep Lindor and spend the big money and do everything that's necessary. I just don't know how much sense it makes to wrap up no, that much money in one player. It doesn't. I mean, if you had thirty million to play with, I, you'd, I would rather have three ten million dollar guys in, in the Indians division, or maybe two fifteen if I had thirty million to spend. But I think what the fans are upset with, or will be upset with, is this is a homegrown guy, yeah, uh, homegrown talent. They didn't trade for him. They they got him from you know they took a chance on him as a young high school kid. And uh, now, now he's going to walk away. And I think most people, most people, when they refer to Linda, are, are already saying and have been already saying, well, un until he leaves in three years. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, who people end up blaming in this because they know that the Indians have made an offer. We believe, I don't say we know, we believe that they made an offer in the $100 million range in, after 2016, which right. he turned down. Um, I'm sure they will make another offer somewhere along the way. 
and which I suspect he'll also turn down. So at that point that they decide that this isn't going to uh, end in an agreement, that's when I think they're going to trade him. And by trading him, they're going to be the ones that everybody says, oh, how could you trade the, the one of the great bones, young players yeah. in the game? But, well, when you, when you think about but it. But you have to if it comes to that. Yes. But when you think about it and you talk, and, and by the way, the sooner that you trade him, that probably the better because you'll get more for the longer time he has with the other team, the higher the offer goes, yeah. I would think. All right. So the owner uh, gets blamed in that deal, too. But uh, I think people forget it's a two-way street. Yeah, I mean, listen, if I were his agent, I'd be telling him the same thing, right? I'd be saying, yeah. hey, you know, by the time you're free to go somewhere, you know, you, you could command $40 million a year. Yeah, and, you know, that's you what I'd be thinking. You a $400 million deal for 10 years, um, and, you know, he'll be a little bit, what is Machado, 26 now, Lindor yeah, is what? 25. 25. So by that time, Lindor may be 27, closer to 28. Maybe getting that 10-year deal won't be as easy. But he's a guy who, before this calf injury, last played 158 games, yeah. 159 games, 158 yeah. games. He wants to be on the field. He's durable. He's a great talent. He'll sell your franchise for you when you put his face in front of a camera. And he can do it in two languages. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing is, here's a guy, uh, when you look at him, I, I, if you forget pitchers in this, because they're, they're rated differently than day-to-day uh, -day position players. I mean, Mach I'd rather have Lindor than Machado or Bryce Harper. Yeah. Uh, the only one I might rather have would be uh, Trout, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I but mean, other than that, give, I'll take Lindor if I could have him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be uh, – I mean, first of all, I guess people are going to have to just look at it and decide that they're going to enjoy watching this guy play for as long as he's here. And, and, you know, not, you know, not fret over this all season because it's not anything that can happen right away anyway. Um, he was smart enough, I think, to, to want to stay out of arbitration. Right. We know that there were some hard feelings, uh, at least from Trevor Bauer's standpoint, um, after he went to arbitration with the Indians. We know that the Indians have avoided arbitration with players for that very reason. So Lindor, I think when asked about it in spring training, said, Hey, did you see the number I got? It was pretty good. I didn't need the to worry mil. about arbitration. Yeah. 216 575 is the number to call. And, of course, you can uh, email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Let's get things rolling. Starting, uh, starting us off, uh, Bud Shaw, WKYC.com. Well, thanks, Les. You know, I was at Tribe Fan Fest this year and talked with Francisco Lindor not long after he signed a one-year deal for $10.5 I asked him if his goal was to avoid arbitration to spare him the kind of back and forth Trevor Bauer found objectionable. Lindor shrugged and said he was kept informed but let his agent handle the negotiations. And that's smart. But unless that changes and he instructs his agent to keep him in Cleveland long term, he's not likely to be around once he's free to move on. It's dangerous to think the market has corrected itself and made the greatest talent more affordable just because this year the top free agents have been slow to sign. We have the Machado contract as the latest example. Lindor won't stay, but that won't be a reflection on him or the Indians. Until further notice, it's just baseball. Yeah, but I really think people say, see, you, you can't, can't even sign your own guy in the cheap Dolans. That's going to come up again. Well, I, I think with Encarnacion, they proved they weren't cheap. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw something today on uh, that someone tweeted, I think from Fox. I, I'm, I'll have to double check it, but that the San Diego population is the highest in the league, in the general area for a one-team uh, franchise. Right. For, for a one-team no, city. No football anymore. Yeah, so there's no, you know, there's no Chicago sharing the Cubs and the White Sox. Right. There's L.A. with the, the Angels. And so maybe that, maybe this makes some fiscal sense when they sat down and looked at it. Um, it's just hard to imagine... Uh, expecting an organization like the Indians in a market like this or yeah. Pittsburgh or or Milwaukee. a lot of others to be able to afford something yeah. like this. 216-575-0403, Bud Shaw with us. And uh, uh, tomorrow night, Dan Lobby will join us. We'll talk uh, mostly Browns football. That'll be tomorrow. Then the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, will be here on Thursday. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll talk. We'll get a spring training update. Gary Francona talked to the media today. And more when we get back. More sports and Les Levine seen exclusively on Cleveland.com. And you can follow us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash more sports and Les Levine with new content posted each and every day. Bud and I return in a moment right here on uh, right here 
on cleveland.com. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q Box Office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball, be there. The way we feel about the game never changes, but we we have to recognize that we we have some new more new guys than we've had. But you know we, we every year you begin to to grow your unique personality for that year, regardless of how many guys were back. So it's the same thing. You know I know I know every every winner every fans always want the splashy move. I, I get it. But I thought our guys did a really good job of quietly bringing in some pretty quality, like like bullpen arms. I mean, we're gonna have a lot to. We're gonna have some difficult decisions at the end of spring, and I thought I did a good job of bringing those types of guys in. I mean, you guys have been around it long enough to know that there's there's always gonna be a guy or two that. Kind of, you know, you're like, whoa, how'd this guy get that good? And then there's probably the guy that backs up a little bit. Just bullpens can be kind of volatile. So it's our, uh, you know, our challenge to find those guys that can be the next ones, not the ones that did it before. Here you have Terry Francona talking about this year. If he, if he can name the guy, he gets to stay. There's so many yeah. arms out there. He, will he recognize, you know, the first guys he recognized, they, they, they make it. You know, getting back to the Machado thing for just yeah. a minute. The, the people who do such things as figuring out wins above replacement and all that stuff, they say there's only a difference of two and a half wins for San Diego having Machado and not having him. Now, I don't, I, I don't think you and I totally believe in all of the new stats, yeah. but if that's close to being true, how can that be worth it? Yeah, I mean, I saw that too. Uh, I also saw that they went from being – a hundred to one long shot to fifty to one after right. they signed him. You know that's just the the nature of that sport. It, you know you you can't sign one great player and just and suddenly that changes your fortunes. That, right, that, that especially a pitcher. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, a pitcher for sure. But even a guy like him who's going to be on the field for five you know five times a week or six times a yeah. week is. Uh, you could pitch around those guys a lot. Right. You know if if need make be. Make them make them. Uh, not effective. Yeah, yeah. Well, All you know, right. the other, can we call it news? No, we probably can't. The other story of the day was a Sports Illustrated profile on Trevor yeah. Bauer. Yeah, he um, had, had some interesting thoughts. He I says thought. a lot of different things. He says that he uh, had not been, um, if it had not suffered a leg fracture after the Jose Abreu 
on drive that he would have won right. the Cy Young going away because, he says, Chris Sale would have faded, as he always does. <laughs> and, of course, That's a quote. Chris Sale did fade. So, I mean, didn't fade, got hurt, and didn't right. finish the season strong. He thought that if they were, if, if uh, writers were going to give the Cy Young to Blake Snell based on 180 innings of pitching, that they should have given it to him. He had 175 be pitch innings of pitching before he got hurt. So it was, uh, it was an unfiltered Trevor Bauer in which he also says that he could have fixed Cody Allen's curveball in two days last well, year. But nobody asked him? But Cody didn't ask. He's a veteran, and he wasn't going to offer. Right, more importantly, yes, Trevor Bauer gave us his three rules of dating. Yeah, he, um, <laughs> I, I, I mentioned the baseball stuff first because I didn't want to— Anybody to think that this was... You don't want to scoop yourself. They might look at us less and think that this is like a dating show. Yes. For This is speed dating. It's an hour, <laughs> yeah, hour show. For... So what did Trevor say about uh, the, his dating uh, Well, habits? apparently he's not interested right now in having a, a real um, committed relationship right. because he's committed only to being the best baseball pitcher he can be. And uh, so he said there were three rules. I think uh, one rule was uh, no emotions. Okay. That he is, uh, if he no d detects that the, the person he's dating is getting emotionally involved, uh, it'll, he'll end it because he is, as he declared himself, emotionally unavailable. Okay. Well, okay. he's being honest. Yeah. Second, no sort of. social media while they're dating. What is that? No I guess only TMZ he, can? I guess only he can. But no, I he so doesn't want anybody that he's dating to be tweeting about it or posting pictures. That's oh. private. No. Okay. And the third uh, had to do with. Um, yeah. How do we say it? Well, just go ahead and say it. Would he be in a monogamous it. relationship? He has declared that he wouldn't be in one and that the person he would be dating must understand that. And if they don't, that's fine because then they can be just polite, platonic friends. PPFs. Yeah. So I'm not well, sure what's in it for that person uh, other than a, well, a two-hour discussion of the physics of throwing a baseball right. over a, a non-candlelit dinner because that would be too romantic. <laughs> <laughs> two two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the, is the number to call. Somebody told me that <laughs> Bowers, the the outfielder that they got from Tampa Bay, Jake Bowers, Jake correct? Bowers, yeah. told me Jake this Bowers? is yes. Okay, this is the guy to watch out for. This is the guy that the Indians front office or or the uh, yeah the front office. Is, is they think this is the guy that is going to be the big surprise of the year. I agree that he could be that guy who you look up and you say, hey, maybe we shouldn't have been so worried about right. the outfield. Um, the other guy I would put in that category is Bradley Zimmer. I just, yeah, where did he come from? I just think that, you know, I, you saw where Francona is talking about having him practice, practice. Until he gets physically able to play and run and hit and all that, he wants some bunting. He says if he gets one bunt a week, what that could do to this offense because he's so capable of getting to second base once he gets on. Did, did you even consider he'd be ready? Um, I, I, I didn't. I don't, still don't think he'll be ready right at the beginning of spring training, but I do think that he'll be ready early in the season. And if he stays healthy, you know, Francona may be overstating it a little when he says he thinks he, ha he can be a special player, but I think we saw some of those. We did. You know, we also saw Major League Baseball pitchers uh, – uh, major league pitchers adjust to him and, and find his weak spots uh, offensively. And, and he's going to have to make those adjustments again, too. Right. But, but what, he's a terrific defender. He can run like the wind. What I we mean, did he see, can help a team. What we did see is him make teams change the way they approach it because he was going from first to third on balls. You yeah. had no, no yeah. chance for him to do that. Yeah. And likewise, first to home on, on gap shots. Yeah, so, I mean, maybe with, uh, with uh, Leonis Martin... Um, if uh, hopefully he's he's fine and can play uh, the whole season this year. I mean, I, maybe it won't be as bad. Um, we do know now that at one point Francona was talking about seeing what was available in free agency. If it was a, an infielder, they might they might ask Kipnis to go to left. Uh, if it was an outfielder, they'd ask Kipnis. He's clearly going to be the second baseman Today he now. said he's the second baseman, Francona, although they'll revisit it if the need be injuries or, or yeah, whatever. I mean, Francona does not want to uh, make him go back and forth, even though uh, Kipnis apparently uh, offered to do so. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Remember the last uh, guy we had who jumped into the lake? We had Hoinsey who jumped in the lake. Then we had Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson, yeah, I do remember that yeah. name. Well, guess what? Baker Mayfield is going to be doing that. 
For the Polar Plunge? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. We'll take a look at that uh, and more when we get back. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. You can uh, enjoy the excitement of uh, harness racing Monday through uh, Wednesday as well as Saturday evening. 6 p.m. is the post time. Open early every day at noon for the simulcast action from the top thoroughbred and harness tracks all around the world. Free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. We'll come back in a moment with Bud Shaw exclusively on Cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate, so no mold or mildew. Plus, it has a higher insulation rating than carpet and is warmer than linoleum, vinyl, wood, or tile. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable basement floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Hey Cleveland, I wanted to invite you to the coolest event of the year, the 2019 Cleveland Polar Plunge for Special Olympics Ohio. Join in and do some freezing for a reason on February 23rd at Edgewater Park. The Polar Plunge raises money for athletes who are leading the charge for full inclusion of people with intellectual disabilities. Click the link in this post to register for the plunge today. One lucky Team Baker plunger will win a pair of limited edition Special Olympics Bose wireless headphones autographed by me. Take the plunge for Special Olympics Ohio today. Well, good for him. There you see the uh, activity which will be this weekend, Friday and Saturday. So on uh, Friday or on uh, Saturday, rather, Edgewater Beach, uh, Edgewater Park Beach. That, of course, on the Memorial Shoreway on the west side. And then uh, 10 to noon, you got the check-in and registration and uh, costume uh, contests and the polar plunge at 12.30. And uh, you can get more information at uh, clevelandpolarplunge.org. They may have to change the name of that, Les. It's going to be almost 50 degrees on Saturday. <laughs> I'm going to be at the Chili Open at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds. Nice. Have you been, done that before? I haven't done it before, but uh, a friend asked me to, to uh, come there and help auction off some stuff, so I'm going to do it in the 3 to 4 o'clock hour. And um, I don't know. It's not going to have that same survivalist feel to it if it's 49. Well, all right. Anyway, this uh, for the Polar Plunge uh, uh, Friday, you've got the early plunge reg uh, registration. That's at the Masthead Brewing Company at 12th and Superior. Then Saturday, it begins at 10 down at uh, Edgewater Park Beach. Terrific. Have you ever Good done one the, of those? I have not. Are you suggesting I should? Well, it's a costume contest. You could, <laughs> you could go, go, as, a, go as a popsicle, I, I presume. <laughs> you could do that. No, I've never done one. I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a wimp. Basically. I wonder if uh, Hoinsey will uh, re redo his, uh, <laughs> his jump in the lake. Then everybody started doing that. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Um, free agency, Cleveland Browns. Uh, you can name names, you can not name names, but you can name positions. What do you think is the number one, two, and three need? Well, uh, I think the defensive line is one of the needs now i haven't studied up to know who's a, who who's available in free agency well but we I, have I, oh good well that's why i like doing this show um but i think that they'll decide on you know on those kinds of deals based on what they see is available also in the draft and because they're not at the top of the draft for once you know, it's going to be harder to predict whether they can pull in a, uh, what they're looking for at 17. You know, Usually because there are quarterbacks, Kyler Murray being one of them, 
they'll a lot of those guys that nobody says are first rounders right now are going to all go high. Yeah, it always happens, and maybe some players then will get pushed down to the the Browns at seventeen what, what do, because do th they don't need a quarterback for once. What do you think the Browns fans' reaction will be? Uh, obviously, the 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 draft in the for so long is already centering on Cleveland and centering on quarterbacks and all that stuff. Now you're at number seventeen. You're more established. Um, do you think there's going to be that excitement, to people watching for it, listening to it, uh, showing up at it? Yeah, I think there'll be some excitement. I think there'll be more if they would take a couple of those picks and go get somebody that they really like think could transform the franchise. Right. And I'm 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 thinking of like an Odell Beckham Jr. or an Antonio Brown. Um, if you would bring somebody in like that via trade, um, wow. Would you want either one? I don't know. I just, I'll be honest with it. I go back and forth on that. I, I think Baker Mayfield's personality is strong enough to handle either guy. And I wouldn't have said that a year ago, not knowing what, what Mayfield's all about. Do you but know I what Antonio not. Brown has asked people to call him? I don't. Mr. Big Chest. <laughs> That is copyrighted by me. Uh, he's going to be hearing from my lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh, well, I bet Baker Mayfield would be, gladly call him that if he pulls well, in, I mean, you know, 14 touchdown it, catches It next works year. with Ocho, Chinko, Ocho Cinco. He, he changed his name, but, you know, Mr. Big you know, Chest. I, Odell Beckham, to me, is the more intriguing guy because of the age difference. Um, I think he's almost five years younger. Um, he, you know, he does stuff that's outside the box and probably causes coaches to be a little um, mystified at times, but I don't think he's a bad teammate. I think there were times when Antonio Brown did fit that description as, as not a very good teammate. All right, so they signed Kareem Hunt. You don't know how much you're going to have of him. Mm -hmm. You want, is number one, with a quick response, is that is that a um, going to be, cumber is, is it going to be bothersome uh, in, in the locker room? Kareem Hunt? Yeah. My experience with these guys is that it, will, it would not be. I, if he's a good teammate, if he works hard, he's at practice, most of these guys, that's what they care about first and foremost, and they consider players' personal lives to be their personal I, lives. But add Mr. Big Chest or Odell Beckham. What do you, do you, can you, you can't have too many of these guys. No, you can't. And I think, you know, Dorsey has brought on some guys that have, have had these – these kind of personalities, you know, Travis, Travis Kelsey wasn't um, uh, the easiest right. or, or, or most, you know, toe the line kind of guy. But he was our guy. He was a Cleveland guy. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think Dorsey's kind of uh, inclined that way if a guy's got great talent and he thinks that that guy lives and breathes football. That's the difference. If, if he believes that, he's willing to put up with, with some other outside Which is why issues. Josh Gordon didn't work. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I felt all along less that, not all along, but after a certain amount of time with Josh Gordon, that I never saw any real love of football from yeah. him. I saw a guy who felt like he should be in the game because of his talent. Right. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com dot com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. We'll check out some of your responses. We had a great question today and we'll come back. More sports and less Levine continues right here on cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. 
It takes the dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter... Here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. It takes Smiley One heating and cooling to bring the heat when things get chilly. Find us at 440-449-HEAT. This date in sports history, February 19th, 2006, the East Beach to West in the NBA All-Star Game, 122 to 120. The All-Star Game at Houston, a guy named LeBron James was the MVP of that game. I thought that was a third quarter score, the way the wow. NBA does. Uh... And what was this one, 178, 164 or yes, something? Yes, something like that. Paul Krause was a Hall of Famer, great uh, defensive back. Uh, will he make it, 1947? I don't know if he will. Roger Goodell. Everybody's favorite, Mike Miller, former Cavalier, Dan Otero of the Indians, and Cody Perky. Look at that picture of Cody. He's on his way to the Today Show to uh, share his uh, memories of uh, field goal kicking. Little known fact, Dan Otero may be the best golfer among the uh, Cleveland Indians. Is that right? Mm -hmm. How good? A, uh, he wouldn't tell me exactly his handicap. But, but I, he didn't I argue think the he's, point? He's a, a low single-digit guy right now. Wow. Yeah, he's a good player. A lot of those pitchers are. I don't know what it, – it must have something to do with uh, with rhythm and <laughs> – Yeah, maybe. I don't know what I else. don't know what it is. <laughs> but I've played with Charlie Nagy, too, and he, he, he was hits, good. hits the ball 300 yards. They said yards. Jim Palmer, the first time he picked up a set of clubs, shot a 76. Wow. First time. That's pretty unbelievable. Let's that, take a look at some of the potential free agents for the uh, Cleveland Browns and anybody for that matter. So we uh, – you, you got You have to add the fact that his last name is really Warrior, right? The Golden Tate Warrior. Mm -hmm. Thirty years old. Seventy-four so receptions. What the WR stands for? Uh, Six hundred eleven uh, receive. Er, whatever that is. What is that? A, a lot of receptions. Six hundred eleven receptions. Seven thousand two hundred fourteen yards. Thirty-eight touchdowns. Ah, uh, that's in his career. career. Made the Pro Bowl. Uh, in, uh, in 2014, that was with the Lions. We continue on to find other names. Adam Humphreys, 25 years old, a wide receiver, four NFL seasons, 76 receptions, and his career, 219. And uh, there you have that. Now we uh, move on to even more. Demarcus Lawrence, defensive end for the Dallas Cowboys, 64 tackles, 10, 10 and a half sacks, uh, two fumble forced, uh, that in 2018. And he made the Pro Bowl in the 17 and 18. The list goes on. Ezekiel Ansah, defensive end, uh, 29 years old, 11 tackles and four sacks in 2018. Career high of uh, four and a half sacks in 2015. Yeah, 14 and a half, rather. And he made the Pro Bowl that year. And uh, we continue on to Grady Jarrett. And Grady Jarrett, uh, 52 tackles last year, six sacks. Three fumbles forced, uh, 179 tackles in his career. And uh, there you see the rest of it. Here's uh, a questionable guy. Uh, but uh, when, he, when, he plays wet, when he plays right, he's still tremendous. Kind of hard to handle, but uh, 32 years old now. 59 tackles last year, four and a half sacks. And uh, two forced uh, fumble recoveries in 2018. 481 tackles in his career. So we'll see. Yeah, they certainly have... What, I think over 60 million, maybe closer to 80 million? I'm not sure. In, I don't get in, the sense they're going to spend it all. No, I mean, I don't, I think you try to, as a GM, you try to wait a little bit on that until you think that, that, you know, you have the team to do it. But the other, you know, the other way to look at it is you spend the money now before you, while you have a, a, a franchise quarterback on a rookie contract. Right. Um, so I think that maybe we'll see them the do some things this year, but then maybe next year they'll really earmark a lot of uh, money toward free agency. More so than some other GMs that we've had here. I think when, when it's all said and done and he does what he's going to do, it'll be clear that he told you he was going to do that. You know, we've had guys who try to fake you out. I don't think he tries to fake you out. I think, I think we get faked out ourselves by listening to everything and then deciding what that means. Yeah, I'm not even sure there's a lot to listen to. You know, they keep everything pretty close uh, under right. wraps. Um, I certainly wasn't aware that Baker Mayfield was the, uh, the overwhelming choice of the organization leading into the draft. I thought that a few weeks out it was still Sam Darnold, and I was wrong about that. Do you think it was uh, unanimous in, in, that, in the front office there when they, they talked about um, Kareem, Kareem, Kareem Hunt? Kareem Hunt. 
I, I can't believe it I, was unanimous. I, 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 I believe it, it's unanimous now. Yeah. I don't believe it was when they came into the room with yeah, the idea. I, I doubt that it was unanimous back then, but I mean, it, there's always somebody that says we shouldn't worry or deal with this right now. We're jumping the gun. It's too early. We don't know what the suspension is. All of that stuff. We, we don't know what the culpability is, what the league has found. That's the kind of things I would have been raising if I were there. But as far as we know, um, the owners have signed off on this, and, and as, as long as that was the case, you know, you had to know that Dorsey was going to push for it. I, I find it hard to believe that the NFL can, doesn't have a list somewhere where they say you can't touch this guy till we make a ruling on what the punishment is going to be. Yeah. I can't believe they, the teams can go out and sign him and then find out later what they really signed for. Yeah, I mean, it was such a bad look with um, the, the guy that, this, that the 49ers cut, and two days later the, the Redskins pick him up. You know, even though there's they're, right. they're cutting him because of another uh, uh, domestic incident, it the, the league would be saving the teams from themselves, but also protecting the shield, if you want to call it sure. that, by just saying when this happens, until a league investigation takes place and a suspension is announced, no one can yeah, sign I a guess player that, that's, that's what been I meant. waived. Yeah, a lot of times these guys are suspended; they're still property of the team, as we saw with Gordon. Right. For, for all those years. So I don't know what you can do about that, but I get the sense that this is going to be a makeup call for what they've missed on. I, I think they're going to come down on come down hard on Hunt, I think. The league. Well, we know that the 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 uh, um, the spotlight is on them in these cases ever since they, yeah, they you know, Rice. came up with a two game suspension yeah. for Ray Rice. Then after that they see the video in the in the elevator and they're mortified by it. Um, at least this time, the video is out there. They've had a lot of time to interview people about this. There are a couple other incidents of not involving women, I don't believe, but in other uh, incidents that he's involved in. They've got a lot of time to go find out those what, what happened in those cases. So um, I would think they're not going to make the same mistake by going light. If, if anything, they'll... I don't know if this mechanism is there, even as I say it, but if they hand out an eight game and he wants to appeal and it gets knocked down to a six or something That's like that, where they want but I to think be. they'll start heavy. All right, we, we had, a, I think, a great uh, question of the day today on Facebook. I'll throw it out to you. Mm -hmm. You get to think about it during the break. What, what's going to come first in, in, in Cleveland and for Cleveland? A World Series appearance, a Super Bowl appearance, or an NBA final appearance? You think about that, and we'll uh, get, let you know what uh, our people said on Facebook today. When, uh, when we get back, Sokolowski's University Inn, if the question was, what's the finest place to go for lunch in Cleveland? You got it. Sokolowski's University Inn. I've been talking about them every day for almost 25 years, more than 25 years. Five minutes out of downtown Cleveland, take the Abbey Avenue exit under the bridge. There's, uh, you're going to find uh, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. Only five restaurants in the country get it each and every year. They were the proud recipients of that great award just uh, three years ago. Uh, the oldest family-owned and operated restaurant in all of Northeast Ohio. It's Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University Inn. We'll come back in a moment right here exclusively on Cleveland.com. The concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt. Eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Naturestone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Naturestone, the only concrete solution. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.
But let's uh, take a look at this date in Les Levine history, February 19th, 1974. Les gets a call from his Sandlot baseball coach telling him that when uh, he's in the lineup, they would change the name of the position from designated hitter to designated batter. Designated out? I guess that was a kinder way of saying Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. that's exactly it. Uh, Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of the harness racing uh, Monday through th Wednesday as well as Saturday evening. Post time is 6 p.m. and they're open early every day at noon for simulcast action. And that's uh, free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. How come quickie time? How come when Jerry West of the Lakers played in the NBA All-Star Game, he had his name on the front and the back of his jersey? You play for the name on the front and the back. Yeah. Uh, that's West, for those who don't know. <laughs> it's bad when you have to explain it. Yeah. yeah. Now we get to take a look at uh, the Facebook question of the, uh, of, of the day. What do you think? Uh, well, no, what, what are we going to see next? Let's start by process of elimination. Yeah. Nobody said NBA Finals, correct? None that we could find. Okay. Um, I, would, I would have to say B. Be a Super Bowl appearance before a World Series appearance. I, only because it feels to me like that's the team that's on the rise and is, you know, has been collecting talent now at the top of the draft for the last four or five years. They should go to the Super Bowl at some point. Let's take a look at what people said here. Let's uh, listen, uh, look, take a look at Gerald Morelli. He says, uh, I might be crazy, but I think the World Series, the Browns <laughs> certainly look uh, playoff bound. But until Brady retires, I don't see any other team, uh, any other AFC team making it. And the NBA playoffs, that was a joke, right? <laughs> Maybe. Lou Boyd, uh, Indians in 2020 on the 100th anniversary of their first win back in 1920 under player manager Chris Speaker. You know, then the Indians won in 48 with the player manager, Lou Boudreau. Obviously, if you make Lindor player manager, you're going to win the whole darn thing. I like it. Lou, uh, then we go to Danny Jasso after the heartbreak loss in the World Series in 97 and their shot in 95. I don't think I'll ever see a Tribe World Series, and especially if the uh, cheap Dolans <laughs> own them. The Browns Super Bowl within three years. Oh, the Browns get such love. From Danny this forgot fan base. that the, the Indians got there in 2016. Yeah. Kevin Piles, definitely a World Series. All are hard, but the road to get to a World Series is the easiest, as evidenced by our Cleveland experience. <laughs> Rick May, still a ways away, but I would choose the Super Bowl. The team is uh, being put together with the intention of being better, not seeing that right now, but with either the Tribe or the Cavs. Frank Oswald says the Cavs in 2038. Oh, there's an uplifting Get your thought. tickets while you can. Get <laughs> Tickets are available. Dan Macy, honestly, probably nothing in my lifetime. How, it depends on how old you are. The Indians came close three different times, only to be let down, and the Dolans closed the current window because they decided not to spend any more money. All right, am I, am I yes. wrong? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Am I wrong in this, or have I joined in on the Mark Shapiro theory of baseball? And that is, I had so many great memories as a kid going to baseball and, you know, with my father, my brothers, my friends, whatever, not even knowing or not even thinking that there was something happening in October. Mm -hmm. And... Are we forgetting that that's really the beauty of, of baseball as opposed to saying, well, it's a bad, it's a bad system or a bad, bad year if they don't win the whole thing in the, in, in the fall? Well, I think back in your day, you didn't know really what the teams were spending on talent, right? I had no so idea. you felt like, in theory, you had a chance. I didn't I even. Think, th I, I don't think in the '60s. I don't think we, I no, even never gave any consideration to the money. To a chance. Okay. Well, I think right now that people are somewhat defeated a little bit and informed in in the best case scenario about what their ownership can afford. So I think it becomes this overarching narrative with the Dolans that they don't have the money to compete with these big market teams on a yearly basis. I I think that it's it's not invalid that that's the that's the issue but um i think baseball is a sport as we saw in 16 i think they were a rain delay away from winning the world series it's hard to believe that of all the things you know, that have happened I, and, in and this i know time. that sounds like an excuse and yeah. i don't mean it to sound that way i'm no, just the saying cubs, I'm, the cubs said the I'm same thing i'm just saying that it's that it was that narrow of a difference yeah. and um so it, it's hard for me now to say well the dolans don't spend enough to win because this organization should have won 
And in, and in 95 and 97, the, you know, Dick Jacobs never spent at a loss. He never right. ran his team at a deficit. Right. And he used what, the, what was available to him through, in part, through 3 million people walking through the door. And four, 455 sellouts in a row, which, yeah. which is hard to believe. Oh, I know. It, it, it's in the Cleveland. farther you get away from it, the more impressive and yeah. and astounding it is that it was like that. It was, and I've said this a, a bunch of times less, and um, I, it was still my favorite period of time in as a sports writer was writing baseball in this town during those years in the in the mid nineties. Yeah, because it was you know the the, the talent was unbelievable. The you know I, I did a podcast for Channel uh, WKYC today with Ben Axelrod. And we talked about 20 years ago, uh, Robbie Alomar uh, was signed, you know, was going to spring training with the Indians for the first time. And when you looked at the talent that Robbie Alomar brought to this team and watching those two guys for three years play next to each other, it was just, a, it was a... And they didn't like each other? No, I mean, I, you know, Ben, who's a younger guy, asked me, like, what my memories of, of Robbie Alomar were at the time. And I said I thought he was one of the more higher maintenance players right. that that the organization ever had. Well, whereas was, his brother was one of the easiest. Yeah, and his brother I think um, had to take him aside more than once and and kind of feel like he was straightening him out a little bit. Robbie took a lot of things personally. He he took the, you know the the publicity that in the the media loved Omar Visco. Whatever Omar did was great because right. he played with you know. Yeah, but such joy. Yeah, but didn't we feel the same way about Robbie? Yeah, but I, I think that I think they felt like Omar got passes. Like Omar was not a good base runner, right? I mean, no. Omar ran into all kinds of Absolutely. crazy plays, right. and 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 you say, oh, that's just Omar. Yeah, no, oh, well, you know, um, and I just think that they thought he got he got let off the hook for some of the things that he didn't do that were you know other players got held accountable for, right? But uh, Robbie was, you know, he was, Ben asked me today, what was the one takeaway from those three years? And Well, the first one, obviously, was that they didn't go to the World Series with Robbie Alomar on the team, um, even though he had three of his best years. I mean, he had three really great years. As, and the, as a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And, um, and then the other thing I would say, the takeaway was that I knew he was a tremendous uh, offensive player. You know, who could do a little bit of everything, hit for power, had speed, all that. I didn't, and I knew he was a good defender. I just didn't realize how great of a defender he was until I saw him hold his own next to Omar. He yeah. made as many spectacular plays during that those three years as Omar Vizquel did. He did, and 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 I remember somewhere in the third year saying he made a, he made a play, and I remember saying I don't recall him making a mistake. I, not an error. I'm talking about a mental mistake or throwing to the wrong base or whatever. He did everything exactly the way the book tells you to do yeah. it. Yeah. I think he hit 336 his final year yeah. here, 2001. Um, and I think at that point he was 33 years old. He also fit that category of you got him during his three great, three of his best years, and then he fell off a cliff when you finally yeah. traded him. And Absolutely. I think that was the deal that brought Matt Lawton and – Billy Traber and wow. Alex Escobar. Remember Alex oh my Escobar? Goodness. No. Who um, <laughs> was a young, you know, could run outfielder who could hit for some power, and people thought he might be coming into his own. Matt Lawton. Matt Lawton, wow. yeah. All right, let's take a break. We're coming back one more time with Bud Shaw at WKYC.com. More sports and Les Levine continues in a moment. Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing. Wednesday, uh, Monday through Wednesday and Saturday. Post time is 6 p.m. Free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. We'll come back in a moment, one more time, right here exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, 
or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just the mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Come on, right, Dan Lobby, Cleveland.com will join us. Which one is Dan? The one he's on the, on the left, left or the, he's, he's the guy on the left? left. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's thrilled you're using that I, picture. I mentioned, uh, <laughs> well, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine. And, of course, with uh, new content uh, posted each and every day. I mentioned uh, the other, yesterday here on the show that I watched, um, I, I talked about it on radio also yesterday that I watched the 1986 uh, Browns game against, uh, against the Mark Yassineau game oh, against the New York Jets. Against the Jets. What a sensational game it was. Bernie had no interceptions for like 100 years, and then he threw two in a row in huh. that game. And it's interesting because you forget so much. You remember certain things. I remember the Gassineau, uh play where he, uh, he got roughing the passer. It would have set up like fourth and what if, fourth and 100. Uh, and they called the the roughing penalty, and the Browns go down and get a touchdown and a field goal. But do you remember that game? Webster Slaughter catches a pass. They're down by three, catches a pass at the five yard line, and everybody's celebrating. And the clock, there's no timeouts, and the clock is moving and moving, mm. and they're celebrating at the five yard line. So Bernie goes up to the line, and he, in those, I'm watching it with a neighbor, and he said, "Why isn't he spiking the ball?" Well, you couldn't spike the ball in those days. You had to set the line and huh. you had to throw it out of bounds. Ah, oh, I didn't remember that. Yeah, so he's he's calling out the play, and then finally he takes a shot to the end zone. But Web, by everybody celebrating too early, it cost them two, maybe three plays on it. Yeah. Well, so, even then, you were monitoring clock management. I, I was, and I have once, and I know the uh, the Haslam's and uh, the Browns' office front office listens to what I say. They they wait till I say it before they act on it. Uh, you know those old uh, white uniforms with the seal brown colors and the name? Get them back. You like those, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that was before my time here. I got here in 91, so right. um, I missed a lot of that. You missed the whole Bernie era. I, I missed the whole thing, basically, yeah. By the time I yeah. came in, uh, it was late in the 91 season. Uh, Bernie Belichick's was already, first Belichick's season. Belichick's first year. Yeah. Bernie was already sort of on the outs. yeah. Uh, with, uh, with the did or didn't staff. have a fight in the tunnel. Yeah, we don't know uh, exactly, right? Or we're not saying. Um, so yeah, I did miss that, and and I've I kept thinking at that time that well, I'm sure I'll be seeing what football <laughs> Browns football is really like in this town within a few years, and now it's uh, well, it's a few years, 28 and, years and later. And I got to tell you something: when they were showing 80,000 people at Old Cleveland Brown Stadium. That place didn't look so bad back when you put yourself in the time yeah. machine of the 1986. You know, when I first started working in newspapers, it was in western Pennsylvania, and I came to Cleveland for a couple of Steeler-Browns games, right. and that would have been like 1977, 78. Right. I don't have a lot of recollection of, of— Turkey Jones, that might have been. It, it, it seemed to me that that was around that time, but— yeah. Let me go uh, to the phones. Let's go to Chuck, who's in Masonry, Ohio. Chuck, good evening. Hi, Ross. Hi, bud. Hey, Chuck. Um, hey, all winter we've been hearing rumors about Bauer or Kluber being traded, and one of the uh, the teams that was prominent in those stocks was San Diego. Yeah. And well, course, they have a great just, uh, they have, they have a great the sabermetric uh, situation yeah. that, that Machado only may increase their their wins by three. Uh, do you think this rekindles their interest in either Kluber or Bauer? Well, you know, I think I read somewhere. I know I read somewhere that. Uh, or in one of the rating services, that San Diego had ten of the top one hundred uh, prospects. Yeah, they have they have a, a terrific. Uh, the people who follow it have picked them as their number the number one farm system uh, in baseball right now. Um, boy, it's hard to imagine. Although, you know, uh, Kluber and 
Bauer, at least for the next few years, are reasonable enough that you could yeah, see the them one, take one on Yeah, one year that. at a time is a problem, though, with the Bauer. And you don't want to get emotional with him either. No, yeah, yeah. He'll, get, he'll break it right off if you do, <laughs> okay? So... Yeah, uh, I, 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 you know, think about that. If you're San Diego, you you, you get uh, Machado. Although, I mean, I I don't rate him as the top guy in the, in the league or in, in baseball. But if you throw on top of that, going after uh, giving up a couple of prospects and you throw Kluber in there, it, it's it's a resurgence. That's for sure. Wow. But but do we want prospects or do we want guys that are available to play now? I I think if you if you think the window is still open, you got to get guys who can play right now. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think you can get a little of each. I think you could get a player that you can use now who might be a triple-A prospect really high in their organization and then maybe a couple of lower minor league guys that, that you can bring along because we know that this team loves players that it can control for a number of years. And also they're pretty good. They're also pretty good at finding the, the, the good players on, in other organizations. They got a pretty good well, track the, record. The number one prospect is supposed to be that Fernando Tatis Jr., who happens yeah. to be a shortstop, who obviously would uh, fill the situation if uh, Lindor, uh, because of his contract, is tradable. Yeah, because yeah, obviously Tatis Jr. would be under control for a lot longer than what Lindor would be. So, but I'm sure they're looking into it. There's no question about it. I mean, they've had a lot of time knowing that. That the uh, whole thing wouldn't come start falling apart until uh, until one guy signed. Yeah, you either know Harper or uh, or Machado. You know Chuck uh, Bauer has spoken on this uh, uh, this trade thing too. And since we know he only speaks the truth, it's interesting to hear <laughs> what he said. And it, and basically he says the Indians would be crazy to trade him right now because they are getting him so cheap. You yeah, get for him, one year you get him for thirteen million dollars. Yeah, for one year. Um, he. I think he has one more year that he would go to arbitration. Is right. that correct? Yeah. Um, and that really next year he thinks is the year that he'll get dealt because by that time he expects to be making, you know, obviously north of 15, probably closer to 18 or Chuck, something. Chuck, thanks for the call. Good to talk to you as always. Uh, Cleveland hey Bill writes in. He says, uh, but unless since experiencing some frustration waiting for Andre Risen to be the last piece that would take us to the Lombardi Trophy, I've been less excited with the idea that one receiver – and that's Beckham or Brown will uh, make all the difference. Well, Beck, uh, the problem was in that case that that Andre Risen was the bad was a bad choice. Doesn't mean that they didn't need that wide receiver. Yeah, he was he was definitely a bad choice. And plus the, you know, at that time the Modell went into debt. He had to yeah. go bo borrow five, five million, million from a bank to pay him. Yeah. You know, and the guy was just um, he he wasn't the best. Wrong guy. Uh, I I went over and did a story on him, Les. Um, Going up to Michigan, I right? Went up to Michigan, yeah. and, um, and of course, he had different memories of <laughs> his uh, time here than All most right. Browns fans. We got to go. Thanks to the great Bud Shaw, WKYC.com. We appreciate that. Dan Lobby tomorrow from Cleveland.com. And the same thing with Dennis Manilov, Cleveland.com, and the Plain Dealer. That'll be Thursday night. I'll be back on 92.3 The Fan on Friday with uh, Jeff Phelps. That'll be from 10 until 2. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow night. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.